I Hate Kids comes out January 18th, 2018. That's the that's not 2018. This is 2018. It's 2019, everybody. So that's when it comes out. Thomas Everett Scott is here. Hello, Thomas. How are you? Hello. Good to see you guys. Nice to Good have you. We were telling you about our, our drama going on in the studio. I can't believe it. It's just... Uh... Breaks your heart, doesn't it? No, it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did you say? Is it a crazy day? Yeah. You could, you could, yeah, you could feel the vibe. You could feel the vibe. You know That's all right. I don't, yeah. lead, I don't live a crazy life, so it's yeah. fun. Ever? Or not anymore? Never. You never no. do? Mm -mm. What do you mean? Just normal, wake up, eat so, breakfast yeah. kind of life? Yeah. Yeah, so boring, so normal. Yeah. On uh, purpose? <laughs> yes. I think so. It's a choice. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I married my college sweetheart. Uh, we had kids, and how many kids? I have two. Yeah, I have a daughter two. who's eight. You do too. Yeah, I have two kids. Yeah, mine are eighteen and fourteen. Oh wow. Okay. So, so you started. You started early. I did. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I basically raised babysitters for the rest of my friends' kids. That's uh, <laughs> seriously. Because well, my I have a seven year old and a like one and a half year old. So uh, I'm like, oh, I can't wait till got like seven more years before she watch watch the baby we get the hell out of here so i i totally understand that but um 14 the age you can babysit i would think around that time yeah if you do it depends yeah. on, i guess it depends on the kid depends on how old the kid that is that they're babysitting right yes right. Mm -hmm. absolutely um well welcome to the show i'm glad Thanks. to have you man so thank you a lot of things that we i'd mentioned that we have we have a mutual friend in in, in bonnie somerville that That's we right. talked about um what did you guys work on i together? worked with her twice on cashmere mafia and right. then we both did an episode of this pilot for uh, it was like a spinoff of criminal minds it was called like, oh cool Beyond Borders or something yeah, like I that. Yeah, I saw that, too. I saw that episode. Yeah, she and I get kidnapped yeah, on a, yeah, boat. a boat. Oh, my yeah. God. It's crazy. You know, yeah. Just a total average life. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, but when that happens, though, too, because, because you know, you got – that. the reason that particular episode kind of, or that, that thing had struck me was because I was a dad and being in that situation with your family. It's, I mean, that's got to be pretty terrifying just as, a, as anyone to try to do that. It would be. It would yeah. be totally harrowing. So, uh, you know, we were always just like this intense, like heightened, you know, drama while yeah. we were acting. And we were exhausted. But also we were out on this boat like off of uh, Long Beach. And um, I don't really do that great on boats. I don't love being like out in the middle of like the ocean. Yeah, no. Man. No, I'm not feeling <laughs> this... Do you get seasick or you're nervous? No, I don't get seasick. I just just don't like the idea that just below me could be just anything. Anything. You know, like yeah. oh, a sea monster. Part. And then this whale like came up and just like – Splash down next oh, to us, wow. which was cool. But it's I, cool to see, as far as yeah, the the nature part. I want to see more nature. I'm good. After, yeah. After after it happens, what? Well, after it happens, because 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 of that, it's like I don't want to get eaten by a shark. That's the worst story. See, she's like she's the other kind. You're either us who get sweaty palms from yeah. thinking about the ocean, or you're the kind of person who's like the ocean's awesome. It's so. I mean, drowning wouldn't be awesome. Getting my dad, eaten my by da, a shark. My dad almost not. drowned. I think that always has kind of stuck with me. Mm -hmm. So wow, well, this so, wasn't you. It's like deep therapy here. Deep yeah, therapy. it's gone off the rails. Yeah, um, <laughs> but nobody's left the room yet, so we're still no. ahead. Give us time. Give us time. <laughs> um, so having kids has been a big, huge part of my life. And this movie. I was just going to say, why do you hate them? So <laughs> I know, right? And I thought, Well, he doesn't hate them. He clarifies many times he doesn't hate them. That's right. And it's a tongue-in-cheek novel that this character has written called I Hate Kids. But in his life, he... He's like, I don't want to have them. So to me, as an actor, I was like, I really, I mean, I've been playing a lot of really great roles, but but I've never played somebody this different from who I am. So he's been a playboy. He's a writer. He loves his life without kids. He's found this woman who also doesn't want to have kids, so he's like super psyched to settle down. And this 13-year-old boy comes along and says, you're my dad. And there's, you know. At nope. the at the engagement or rehearsal dinner right. situation, to... so it's, it throws this huge wrench into my character's plans, and uh, and then Titus Burgess plays this uh, radio psychic who I totally think is a scam artist, and he he's saying that he's the one who psychically linked us and stuff. So then he go we go on this road trip to find the kid's mom, and you know hijinks ensue. I think that what was so cool about your relationship with the love of your life in this movie, the person you're engaged to, is that usually you see that girl being the psycho who's always like, he's lying, he's crazy. And she was not like that at all. I've actually never seen that in a movie where they didn't just go for drama's sake. Did you guys talk about that a lot? No, it was just in the script. I mean, there was um, just Rachel Boston played that part really beautifully. She's so she was adorable great. and great. And uh her friend, or is it her sister, Ray Seahorn, plays the... The pregnant sister. Yeah, who's kind of doing the complaining for her and the suspicion for her. And those two together, I think, are great in the movie. Um, I love Ray Seahorn. I'm a huge Better Call Saul fan. Yeah. I mean, she's so good in that. She's incredible in yeah. that. So did you get to 
actually work with her. There wasn't that much interaction between the two of you guys. Because we were on such a short um, schedule and tight budget, and because her character, their characters are chasing our characters, we wound up like working in a lot of the same locations together. Just you know, someone would be shooting in the morning, someone in the afternoon. So we would kind of cross paths. Uh, and and hang out a bit, but they're, they're great. You've I mean you worked on a bunch of uh, you've worked on some big budget movies. You worked on this is I, this is what I like about the this kind of small the indie feel. It's you always get to me you always get like the, the most real stories out of those. You always get the the, the the best emotion, and you get to develop character more. Do you have a preference? And because you know, like I said, you do you've done a lot of television. You've done a lot. Of, like, do you have a preference of what you like to do the most as far as being an actor goes? I don't think so. I mean, I'm not really choosing things based on the size of the budget. I'm really usually just pitching, you know, picking stuff that that I respond to. And um, as an actor, I just want to kind of keep working, and and it makes me happy, which may sound corny, but I really do enjoy it. So, you know, as long as I can keep doing it, um, it's it's great. I don't always get these opportunities to play different kinds of characters. Right. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered to me what size the budget is, but. Um, but but being on big movies like La La Land or even bigger yeah. movies like, um, you know, I actually haven't been on that too many like giant budgeted movies. Maybe like Race to Witch Mountain back like that Disney movie I did oh, with yeah. The Rock. But, you know, those are fun too. Those just – they just have better craft service to be honest. You know, that's like really what it is. Can I just tilt this up? Yeah, Always please. doing Absolutely. it for the crafty. Yeah. I, really. yeah. Do you ever run anything by the high school sweetheart or your kids? Are you thinking like, all right, are they going to be able to watch this? Should I take this role because of how they'll look at dad or how they'll look at me? Or is that not in your mind? Like it's not – nice to be able to do stuff that they can see you know that's really fun but i mean i don't pick stuff based on like whether they'll approve of it or not although if i don't like it usually they're not gonna like it. we all pretty much have the same you know sensibility right. when it comes to that stuff you mentioned it's funny because we, we were talking about the critics choice awards we got a chance to go the other night and i had a nice conversation with damon Giselle actually and sweetheart of a dude right man. really sweetheart of a dude and his movie so far I told him that's what I had the conversation I had with him was like you were one of those guys for me the same way I look forward to like a Tarantino movie or a Nolan movie I'm looking forward to your he's three for three man I loved I, right? I loved I loved uh, First Man great loved um, Whiplash. Whiplash and La La Land so it, there's to me those are the three movies of his that that I that if any did a, he did the short film for Whiplash I think that's how he got got started but have you have you kept in contact with him and no, we haven't really kept in contact. I mean, everyone just kind of moves on to their next yeah, thing. But yeah. we really had a great connection, and uh, I got to meet his folks at the, you know, Oscars party. And everyone, he's just such a normal dude. Yeah, and, he is. Yeah, and and his movies are so different from one another. Uh, he just has so much respect for this process, and he's obviously so gifted. Um, I love that he keeps working with Justin Horowitz, who wrote yep. the Horowitz, who wrote the great music. Uh, First Man has just got that haunting score. I love that. Yeah. Like it was used so well throughout. And I told, it's that opening scene in that movie. It's like takes your breath away. Maybe nauseous. You, yeah, you, you feel, feel like you're in. I think if you're going to walk out of a movie, that's the one. If in it, the beginning, if, if you're if it makes you all the spinning makes you, you know, nauseous. Yeah, you yeah. know whether or not you can handle it within the first like ten seconds, and then you either, you're either in or out. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can't walk out of that one yeah. because of Claire Foy's eyes just kind of keep you <laughs> locked in. Yeah. Wow. It's interesting that you said that everybody kind of just moves on after the project. Is that typically the case on all your sets where afterwards you don't keep in touch? Or are there ever those rare situations where you really bond with somebody and then they're your BFF? Yeah. I mean, on my first movie, I became best friends with Steve Zahn. And he yeah. was my best man in my wedding. And our wives are great friends. And we're just super tight. We're like family. He's like yeah. an uncle to my kids and vice versa. But I thought that was going to happen on every movie, you know? Oh, I'm going to make a best friend on every single movie. This is great. And it just doesn't happen. It was just like happened to be on the first one. It's like small pushing? pockets of summer camp, right? <laughs> it, it is kind of what it is. It is. And that's maybe part of the difficulty of maintaining those friendships is that you have that one thing in, in common, that movie that you worked on, and it's great. Right. But it's tough to recreate that set life. It's, it's very a, much like being in the yeah. circus. <laughs> it's interesting, though, too, because as, a, and as an actor to where – don't. So let's say your first movie is, is are you referring that thing you do that thing you do sorry yeah yeah and, yeah no that's okay um when because like tom hanks so the reason i asked that is just obviously this great connection to have um yeah that, is that because maybe there's certain movies that not necessarily just keeping it for relationships like you got with Zon, but then there's other relationships with business that you want to maybe make and that that i think that's part of the networking inside of the set yes 100 percent, and you I certainly want to be able to have such great relationships with these people that, you know, you want to keep working together. The Playtone people, the, the company that Tom and Gary Getzman formed after that thing you do, they're amazing. And there's always been this connection. We've all stayed friends. We all 
catch baseball games together. And, you know, there, that's wonderful to be part of the Playtone family because it was the first thing I ever right. did. So that it is very special. And I do stay in touch with Jonathan Shack and Ethan Embry. Uh, as well, the other wonders. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that kind of goes back to what I wanted to ask you about your movie now. I had kids. So how did you get involved in this one? Again, this, was the script just kind of sent to you, or, or did, you, did you you met through you knew through connections or anything? I got sent the script. Okay. I loved the title. I thought that was really funny. It made me laugh, and I was like, well, now i got to read this. Uh I met with John Asher, the director, and we talked about tone. We talked about where we saw this guy. I wanted him to physically break down like throughout the movie because I think this character who feels this strongly about kids and then he obviously has to kind of like – I wanted him to get dragged toward yeah. changing his mind. I didn't – you know, I wanted it to be a difficult decision for him just for the comedy. And uh, we were all on the same page. And like I said, small budget, small schedule. You got to kind of really come together on mm -hmm. an idea quickly and – and uh, and hope that it works. And then Titus brought such great stuff. I mean, he's so funny and and talented. And then he just you know yeah. solidified the whole thing. And then that kid is great. He was unbelievable. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe how well you guys played off each other too. I mean, for a young actor, you never really know what you're getting. It's kind of a crapshoot. Was he like that from the first take? He's just not like your typical uh, kid actor. He's uh, he's just so unique and different and he's just he's funny without even opening his mouth you know i, I mean i just loved it i loved working with him well again the, I could tell. the, the movie yeah. is i hate kids and it, i hate kids and it comes out january 18th in theaters and on demand there was a show that you did when i first moved to la there was a show that you did um and i hope that we can remember the name of it, it and it was i loved the premise of it i loved what what it ultimately turned into but it was about time travel and and was and, and it was I believe that you were there was like the was it called do over or yes was it, Penn Badgley? it was do over so I play a guy who like gets knocked out and goes back in time or yes. something like that yes it was a and TV then, show it was a TV show yeah and I remember seeing it because I, I I'm fascinated by that stuff and I, I kind of always had these ideas and this show had come out right it was right around like ninety nine or two thousand yeah was, yeah and exactly and I remember that and I remember you I was a big I had seen that thing you do in college when it was Florida State loved it loved what you did in that movie and then I was like oh. I like this guy. I want to watch it, and I love that premise. And it just, I think it was ahead of its time. Yeah, and I like, kind of obsess about like going back in time. Yeah, you know, and uh, and I think every, I don't know how many people do this, but you know, you always just kind of like wonder, like if you could go back, what would you do differently? Right. And, and right. that's basically what that movie was. And the writers were just like mining that for for comedy. I'd love to see that show come back. That yeah, was, I know. Like a cool premise, man. Yeah, and Penn Badgley. I mean, that was like wow. one of the first things he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. gotta check, check that it out. out. It's, it was where it was, was cool. it? Was it Fox? Warren Littlefield was the producer, but I can't remember where it I was. Think, I think I want to tell you it was Fox, but I could be completely could wrong. Could be. Does that happen to you a lot? You've just done so many projects where it's like, I don't it's a while. Really it was know 18 where, years ago. Yeah. A while ago. 19. I, yeah. I, I think. Um, Working for a long time. It, yeah. And which is a good thing. But mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, it always bums me out if I run into somebody who. I'm like, nice to meet you. And they're like, you know, we, we worked together before. Right. But it wouldn't be like somebody who I had. It's not your fault, though. You meet so many people on set and all over the place every day. You meet so many people. They, and they're not realizing. It's true. And it's usually like an actor or somebody I have like a real face-to-face -face with. I don't forget. But like if it's just somebody who, you know, I, I'll always feel bad if I don't remember. Yeah. You see, I mean, you seem like a pretty nice guy, though. I mean, unless, again, he's a phenomenal actor. Like, what a bunch of dicks when he comes out, when he leaves. He, he's he, pretending to have this whole simple life. Right. I, like, I remember my high you. Sweetheart. I just don't like you. I just decided that's what I was going to do that when I came in here. <laughs> I was going to play this guy. It's good. It's good. So you haven't had, because like you said, you have had this nice life where you married your high school sweetheart, had the two kids. What do you pull from when you're playing all these different roles? What do you pull from? Uh, Imagination? Just, yeah, I think I just was always like a. Uh, pretending as a kid i have three sisters and the only boy and um you know uh yeah there was no i mean we had such a great neighborhood and the like just like vast woods out behind our house and i was just constantly like playing pretend and my younger sister megan and i were just partners in crime and she just we just made each other laugh most of the time i'm sorry where, where are you from massachusetts massachusetts what part? oh there you go east bridgewater oh. where are you from uh, newton Newton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, closer yeah. to the my city. My mom went to Bridgewater State. No way. So. That's where my sister went. See? Yeah. Right I painted uh, dorm rooms as a summer job oh, wow. at Bridgewater State. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. See, Roxy, you know everybody. Small connections. Well, it kind of, like where we grew up, 
nothing to do and it's cold so movies playing playing pretend whatever it is yeah, that you're doing yeah. that's kind of the it's either that or drugs so good choice thank you <laughs> good choice. Thanks. smart life choices right I, I, I couldn't find the drugs there was just none in my small town I wasn't <laughs> look, I, I'm just kidding I wasn't looking for them but uh, yeah it was great like East Bridgewater is much smaller than Newton yeah there's like three stoplights in the whole town mm. Yeah, there's wow. just was very. Was that to daunting do. then to be from that that small town and then and then want to come out to Los Angeles? Did you go from there to Los Angeles? Where'd you, where'd you go? Yeah, it was just like a progression. Like I, I I knew that by the end of high school, I definitely wanted to get out of there. Okay. I went to Syracuse University, which was a bigger yeah, campus, yeah. and I was definitely like, oh my god, I've never seen this many people in one place. Were you a theater major? I, I, I at first communications, and then I transferred, and then New York, which was scary. Yep, like you're saying, yep. and then yeah, I kind of never really thought I'd. It's good training, LA. though. That's good training to go to start in New York, and then if you can handle New York, then you can handle LA for sure. I think so. They're totally different cities. Yes. Yeah. And, oh. and your sweetheart was just like, yeah, I'll bop around wherever you're going. Well, when we met, we were both. I didn't meet her in high school. I met her in um, college. Oh, college, and we yeah. were both doing acting. We're already finding holes in this story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I uh, we we were um, doing theater in New York. We didn't date in college. We just were friends. And then when she she was a year behind me, when she got to the city, we started doing this theater together. And I was I had always liked her, and I think she never gave me the time of day until this one moment, and then. You know, that's that, it. The rest is history. Yeah. So I don't know. I somehow just like wore her down. I guess. I <laughs> well, there you go. And now, that's how you do it, guys. That's how you do it. See, <laughs> got ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Everett Scott here, and thank you for joining us today. Oh, the movie is me. I Hate Kids. It comes out in theaters and on demand on January 18th. Please go and check it out, and please come back and visit again. Man, it was, I would it was love a lot to. of fun. Thank you so much.